Karibu sana. This is hashtag Why in the Morning. You're hanging out with me, Brian Sankwa. And in just a bit, I want you to interact with us on our social media and let us know where you're watching us from. And also, what are some of your reactions to us, the question you've asked on our social media platform, especially in terms of matters education. And uh, my previous co-presenter was actually having an incredible discuss discussion about that. What next after KCSE? And this is in regards to the results that were released uh, last year. I definitely would like to see and hear your feedback on that as well. And we will sample it towards the tail end. But right up, it's all matters entrepreneurship. But before we get into it and before I introduce our powerful guest that we have in studio, we're going to talk about actually how to nurture a successful business. What is the journey that you have to walk through before you come out successful? And I have a very interesting and also powerful guest in studio with us. And this is also touches on matters, SMEs, and much more. Mm -hmm. And uh, just an interesting update on uh, uh, this, 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 is, this is on MasterCard, uh, on SME confidence. It, it talks about a sharp increase, uh, Kenyans being optimism, and this in, again includes uh, a number around 66% of, of them are confident about the next 12 months compared to 45% of the previous year. And this again is also anticipated with the future growth that will be driven by you know, the investments. But uh, here it says 66% uh, of SMEs across Kenya are confident about business growth. 97% believe that omni-channel payments present the biggest opportunity for them, followed by digitizing their businesses and uh, an estimation of up to 96%. And this is just incredible. Also, companies are also seeking to recover. There's those that have not like fully recovered from the pandemic. And also, they are on their way to return to the growth phase. Our research shows that up to 73% of SMEs in Kenya are concerned about the recent rise in cost of doing business, especially in the capital sector. That includes an estimation of 44%. Cost of living, right? It touches on matters the economy. Is the economy we are in right now, especially as we are kickstarting 2024 really favorable? I'd also like to hear from you and our guest who is live with us in the studio will also touch on that and much more being joined live by Rosemary Kirimu. She is the co-founder and CEO of Rockmix International. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, Sakwa. Great to meet you and Great Karibu Sana. Happy New Year. But, but there was, I was having a, an argument with a friend and she was like, Rikishafika with two year uh, January, stop telling people Happy New Year. <laughs> no, 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 no. The year is still new. We must yeah. wish each other happiness. And yeah, I was like, yeah, he ended up early March because yes. it's still a fresh new year. It's a new year. It's a yeah. new year. We are yeah. optimistic. New year comes with new things, new beginnings. Yes. So yeah. we are very optimistic. So please. And then, and then, and then, and Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> and happy new year to you once happy again. Happy new year to you. Thank you. Now yes. let's get into your journey. You've really walked an interesting journey. I from have. How you started your business. Mm -hmm. it, a business that has been there for over 10 years and yes. two more. This is a decade and another into And as another well. three years. And it's, a, it's an interesting company. Yes. A paint manufacturing, a paint manufacturing company. company. Yes. Talk to us how you started it and uh -huh. where was the vision born? Okay. Yeah. So uh, growing up, I grew up in a town called Nanyuki. Uh, my mother was a teacher and a household that never had money. Everybody growing up, money was never enough. Yeah. And so at some point when I finished um, high school, I thought I need to crack this money business. We need to figure out how to make money. And so I went on a journey on reading and I read very, very many books. Yeah. Any book that spoke anything to do with money, I read. Yeah. And I figured entrepreneurship was the way. Right. So at heart, I became an entrepreneur. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but yeah. then I knew at heart I was going to become an entrepreneur. I was going to build a business. I was yeah. going to build a big, big business. So after that, I finished high school. I came to University of Nairobi. I did a BCom, yeah. uh, specialized in marketing, and had yeah. a few opportunities here and there. So yeah. I've worked in research. I've worked in tours and travel. I've also worked in the construction industry where yeah. I saw the opportunity for paint. Right. So when the opportunity came, mm -hmm. I went into it with both hands, yes, and yeah. started started from scratch, like from zero. We started right. to build something. Right. Yes. In an article that's written about you, you are a research assistant of yes. yes. some sort. Yes, for yes. Also another paint. Yes. Is it paint manufacturing or a paint distributor? They were paint distributors. Okay. Yes. So you, are, you, you volunteered or you were also on payroll? No, 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 I was working. I You're was working. working. I was working. Payroll. I had a job. Immediately you got out of UN. Yes. Right. No, immediately I got out of UN. I did a few industries, a few right. industries here and there. Then I was now a research assistant uh -huh. uh, for this distributorship company as a business development manager. Right. But that, then that's a big, 
sport. Yes, it was a big <laughs> it was a big position back then. Yeah. And so which year? This was in we're in twenty twenty three. We're in twenty twenty four. Yeah. Yes. So this was about twenty twelve. Yeah, twenty twelve, twenty thirteen. Yeah, twenty twelve, twenty end of twenty eleven, because oh. I worked there for about a year, right. a year or so. Okay. And I had tried many other ventures. Okay. I had tried a few businesses here and there, but then this right. gave me an opportunity to build something. I was right. looking for something to build. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I thought paint looked interesting. There was a new product that came into the market back then in the paint industry. Right. The textured external finish known as Wallmaster. Oh, uh, for somebody who doesn't market. understand that, <laughs> what understand does that mean? <laughs> that means there's a textured product. Your exterior these days, if you look at most buildings, they are rough. You see All the rough right. exterior? Yes yes yes, 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 yes. It was coming into the market then. It was really new. Right. It was really new. So I saw okay. it as an opportunity back then. Mm. So we set up, I decided to set up this organization and just start right. one customer at a time. Right. Yes. So this is towards now uh, the end of 2012. This was into towards the end of 2012, yes, into 2013. Yeah. Yes. And how, how, how was the journey at that time? Uh, what were some of the circumstances that also inspired you or even broke you? Yes. And also, uh, the big, actually, one of the biggest key factors is capital when you're yes. starting a business. Mm -hmm. So did you have savings? Mm -hmm. uh, did you borrow a loan? <laughs> and interesting enough in the mm -hmm. article about you is that you, you advised all business owners in the world and whoever has a dream of yes. owning a business yes. don't rely on bank loans or mm -hmm. any sort of loan yes so how was yours back then so starting back then uh during my previous employment i had yeah. some savings in the circle so i was oh, a circle circle. Girl. yes okay so i had some savings in the circle so i had some money to start the business which was which basically meant my rent right. uh, and the first machines to manufacture Right. But then I was clear that I was going to make money for my customers. Right. So my biggest well, are you sure? challenge. You see, if you're running a business and you don't have a customer, you're right. not in business. Yeah. You're not in business. If you don't have a buyer who can right. buy your product, uh -huh. you're not in business at okay. all. At all. That's one is a tip number one. Yes. <laughs> so you have everyone. to get your customer. First. You have uh -huh. to get your customer. Okay. And so when we were starting, we would I would look for the customer. Okay. I'd come to you. You see, as long as a building is being built. I know you will need paint at some point. Exactly. So I would walk to you and ask for the business. Right. And so for the customers who believed in me back in the day, they would yeah. give me an opportunity to, for example, do a sample. So I would sample for them the product. Right. They would see it. They would like it. We'd do a quotation. Then I'd ask for a deposit. Remember, we are a startup. Mm. So I'd ask for a deposit. They would yeah. give me a small deposit. We would deliver the product, do the job, and on to the next customer. And yeah. on to the next customer, and the next customer, and the next customer. And that's so how it picked up. And that's how it picked up. So I was yeah. all over this city looking right. for customers. And, and by the way, speaking of looking, how were you looking? Were you like approaching individually in churches, in your circle? Did you have like a kachama? Definitely mtukawa <laughs> is because of kachama. I was in a chama. But <laughs> I let me know, tell right? <laughs> the, the easiest way to get a customer is right. to walk to a building, a construction site. Right. I don't need to know you at all. Mm -hmm. As long as there's a site going on that is being built, I would right. walk in, ask for the foreman, ask for the architect, ask for the owner, mm -hmm. and then pitch my product. Right. Yes. So you're doing pitches. Left so I would pitch, mm -hmm. we do a sample, and then we do a really good job. So yeah. the beauty about doing a good job meant referrals. So if right. I paint your building and do it really well, then yeah. all your friends are my clients. Oh. Yes. You and then you see, okay. paint is not hidden. Right. Everyone can see. If we yeah. do a good job, it's a good job. If we do a bad job, it's, it's a evident. Bad job. Yeah. Yes. Like the evidence the is. The client can just see. The it. client can see. Right. Yes. And people have very many opinions, especially when you're painting. Right. Like yeah. they're, they're very opinionated. So especially paint. Kenyans. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Kenyan, Kenyan thing. It's a Kenyan you know. thing. Right. Yes. And so I that's think how we also began. That's also the beauty of, you know, having a business that strategic, like this is my target customer yes. and I'm aware that I can go beyond this or below yes. this or above yes. this. Yes. 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 That's yes. interesting. Yes. yes. Now, uh, speaking of money in a circle. Speaking <laughs> of money from the circle. So right. I got money from the circle and so we started doing, doing business. So okay. one of the biggest challenges we had back then was raw materials. Uh -huh. And because you need the raw material to produce before you can sell, I needed capital. And that's when I went to uh, one of the local banks. Okay. And they asked me for a title. And I thought, where? Oh, this and is yeah, a business title? Ha, yes, a title did for land. You oh, need land. For security? Yes, for security. Oh my goodness. Back then, right now, business, but the environment for doing business right now is mm -hmm. way better than back in the day. 
Okay. Yes. Na vile watu wanali economy. Watu wanali economy <laughs> but at least these days banks can give you unsecured facilities. Like right. such facilities now exist. Yeah. Back in 2012 there was nothing like an unsecured facility. For who? If you don't have a pay slip. Yeah. Akuna. It yeah. didn't matter how good you were in terms of money management. Right. Yes. Yeah, and you managed to pull through that. So I managed to pull through that. It was very very hard. Uh, but in 20 I think 15 or 16 round about there. I was auctioned. Wow. Yes. Please tell us, uh, you know, when somebody hears of auctioning, it's actually a scary thing. I For those do. that have been through it, it's a lot of trauma. You are scared. It's uncertain. In short, it's even like it's, it's disaster happening to you because you're bound to lose your property, your assets, yes. and your money sometimes. So True. what happened around that? So when I was being auctioned, I money management, just cash flow management, I wasn't too good at it. I was still young and I still wanted to have a good life and build a business and have fun and build a business. So yes. I wasn't too good in terms of cash flow. Okay. And so, yeah, it caught up with me. My decisions caught up with me and I was auctioned. Yeah. But this is what I see. For business yeah. people, being auctioned is a rite of passage. Yeah, it's, a, it's part of the experience in the journey. It's a rite of passage because after that, yeah. then you, you move away from the myop what you imagine business is to yeah. doing real business. That delusionment of the like, delusion. it's a good bubble, everything yes, is going to flow, right? Yes, and then all of a sudden, it, yes, it busts you your bubble. Yes, you drive a 4x4 four four and live yeah. in the poshest part of town. And oh my goodness. That bubble it's is just bust. just a fantasy. It's bust. Mm -hmm. And you, you're allowed to be sad for a few days. Then Depression you wake in up, a kicking 101. You wake up, you dust yourself, and you yeah. start again. This time, mm -hmm. you build with fundamentals. And strategy and strategy. So uh, speaking of strategy, how did you manage to like climb up? Because I can only imagine here you're experiencing being auctioned. Mm -hmm. And also maybe if you can also point out maybe what are some of the properties that were taken away from you? Mm -hmm. And how long did you take in that season before you started building up again? One of the things that was taken away from me that was very critical was my car. Mm -hmm. Yes. So my car went. Now, doing sales for paint in Nairobi without a car, you've been grounded, literally. Mm -hmm. Yes, you've been grounded. You cannot sell, neither can you deliver, neither can you buy. Because okay. now all this now means you have to hire and it becomes very, very expensive. Yeah. Yes. So my office, what I had in my office furniture, they were taken, my computers, what, what, what not, and my car. Yeah. And how many people were you working with at that at time? At that time, I think I had two employees. Okay. We were very small. We're not still a big number. Not as we are much. right now. No, no, no. Yeah. We were small, so I had two employees. One of them left, the other one stuck with me. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Bad times. Uh, bad they say times. hard times. <laughs> hard times. They show you who the real ones are. They show you who the real people are. And in are. business, it's like a real deal now. Yes. Uh -huh. So from there, I became, my team and I became extremely disciplined. Okay. Yes, in terms of cash flow management. And we've grown from retained earnings. So right. you make money and that profit is what you pull back into the business, the business yeah. and you pull it back into the business and pull yeah. it back into the business. Yeah. The challenge we're having right now is we are looking to scale. Mm -hmm. And so although now the business is completely stable, it can hold itself, right. we are looking to scale. We are looking yeah. to expand into new markets. Yeah. And so that's where we're at at this point of the journey. Uh, and that's an interesting uh, lesson as well to any business owner. Mm -hmm. And for you, you know, being there for 10 years and now two more on top, yes. it, it means you're an expert in, in, in that industry as yes. well. Yes. And I can't wait for you to be featured on Forbes. I know that's <laughs> also part of your dream. But yes. let's get back to cash flow. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very key uh, component for any entrepreneurial journey. And yes. leave alone a, a mentioned stories, the SMEs, small, medium enterprises, our mm -hmm. on Anzi Shavit, Kama, Akuza Nyanya, Akuza Mtumba, Gikosh, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Managing your cash flow is really a key, uh, important skill. Yes. Which I feel like maybe a lot of people do not understand that. Yes. And maybe sometimes, um, maybe for a person who started a journey of uh, entrepreneurship, mm. you learn on the job, it's a job you learn, you learn on, on the, the job. job. But then I feel the like job. these lessons about money should be even introduced to younger kids in school. Yes. Like as early as, when I say my baba, mama, the first thing is, okonye. You person. have to teach yeah. children on how to manage money. Right. Cash flow is king. Cash flow is king. And the thing about business is you have to understand pesa ya biashara si yako. Okay. Yes. Money from the business does not belong to you. It's mm. not your money. It's not your money. You have to separate. You have to yeah. separate. This is money for the business and pay yourself a salary. Mm. 
yeah. get the discipline of paying, of paying yourself. yourself. Yes. So sometimes it means you can get caught up in investment and don't even reward yourself in the business. Yes, if you get caught up in it. And the thing is, you have to sacrifice. Right. By the time you're in business 10 years, you have to have a lot of sacrifices. There are things you want, but you can't afford. Yeah. You have to be clear. You're, by the way, pesa, you're broke. The business is rich, yes. But you as an entrepreneur, you don't have any money. So right. please don't buy property. Because mm. if you go to buy, say, something like land, what have you done? You've tied up your cash flow. Yeah. You've tied up your cash flow. So what happened during COVID is we saw serious price fluctuation. Right. Price fluctuation and uh, raw material shortage. Yeah. So what would happen is the, the quality of raw material that we, were, that we like to use was not as easily available. Right. And then price fluctuation and then the dollar went up and then the war in Russia. Yeah. Right now, actually, I'm being told there's going to be another challenge because okay. there are militants attacking cargo ships yeah. on the Red Sea. Right. Yes. These ships are headed to Kenya, Africa? Yes, coming to Africa. Okay. I was given this information yesterday. So we are being wow. told by yeah. our suppliers, I need, are you, what can you lock up? Like right. this is the stock we have, what can you pick yeah. up? So such challenges, if you, don't, if you haven't managed your cash flow well, then you're caught yeah. flat-footed. Yeah, yes. and that's, you know, I remember also when the president even mentioned that, you know, this war has massively affected entrepreneurs. A lot of people are like, how? But this is Kenya. But now I see the reason why. Yes, because, you know, we are net importers. We import almost everything. Yeah. Yes. So because we import, anytime there's the international market, the world now has become a single market. That's yes. Okay. So if something goes, if there's war, that means there's shortage, say, in China or shortage, say, where we bring our stuff from, from Europe. Yeah. then that means the prices have gone up. Mm -hmm. So if the price of my raw material goes up, the price yeah. of my paint goes up, the cost of construction goes up. Mm -hmm. So you who's paying rent, your rent yeah. has gone, gone up, up as well. Yes. Yeah. So the cost of living is not an arbitrary thing. It's yeah. You can follow it up. If you're interested in learning, you can follow it up. Oh, this is why it went up, this is why it went up. And this yeah. is why now you're being affected, you as a person who's paying rent. Right. Or you as a person who's building your own home. Yeah. Your initial cost, we service your final cost half, is fluctuating because of yeah. international, because of factors that are really beyond your control. Yeah, yes. and it's really incredible you have this awareness because I can only imagine now to the normal Mwanainchi who is not aware mm. of such an experience that you had. Yes. You know, you're sitting in the deeper end where you're able to oversee and view all this yes. as it's happening, as the statistics are coming. Yes. You're even noting and even experiencing it as well, which is yes. really an excellent lesson for everyone or anyone who is watching yes. right so now. So as an entrepreneur, you really have to understand your yeah. industry. And you right. also have to understand the macroeconomics and also right. the microeconomics. Mm -hmm. You have to understand like now interest rates have gone up Right. Because the base rate at Central Bank went up, so yeah. interest rates have uh, gone up. I was, I was actually seeing uh, an update about uh, a shilling. Up. I, I think I, I'll, I'll point it out later. Yes. They, are, they updated it this morning. I think it was on Business Daily. Yes. About a shilling. Is, has it dropped or it's going no, low? it's gone up. It's, it's gone, gone up, up, right? I think we're at 157 now. Yes, I saw it early on in the morning. Yes. Wow. Yes. Meaning that things are about to also get a little bit murky? Things are going to get murky, however... When you're an entrepreneur, you have to figure out. So what happens is you cut your margins because you don't want also to push all your costs to your customers. Right. You also have to remain competitive. Yeah, sure. You have to Absolutely. remain competitive. Yeah. Uh, watch your margins and see how you can cushion your, your customer. Right. The other thing that we've done also is we've moved into new markets. Right. So we've recently just moved into Uganda. Right. Yes. Which is like an extension. And that's mm -hmm. growth. Now that's growth for us. Mm. So what I was telling you before we started was last year when everyone was complaining, we actually grew. Right. We actually grew. And you see, as much as people talk about the economy and yeah. there's the naysayers, like I would like to call them, yeah. we have to keep going on because this country belongs to us. This exactly. country belongs to us. The businesses mm. are ours. We have to keep going. Right. We have to keep going. Does that mean maybe we work a little harder, change strategy, look at other markets? Yeah. But we have to keep innovating. We yeah. have to keep innovating. It's, it's really incredible because, you know, you're speaking with that mindset of an expert. You know, I can only imagine for a person, like you said, and they say, it's just, uh, and ask you to, oh, economy go up, and they say, you know, ni president, ni president, but yeah. it's really incredible. Now, still on that update about the shilling, I've actually found it. It says, uh, last month, the Central Bank of Kenya surprised the market as it unexpectedly raised interest rates by 200 basis points, that is 2%, lifting the uh, central bank rate to 12.5% from 10.5%. Mm -hmm. And in its decision, the CBK Monetary Policy Committee noted that the exchange rate depreciation had continued to exert pressure on domestic prices. 
Yes, so that means yeah. domestic borrowing is going to become expensive. It's yeah, going to become for internally expensive. here, for us. For internally here, for okay. business people. You see, now we've grown, so now the banks give us money. Okay. Now when you grow, you don't have a problem raising money. Right. So now two things, either you renegotiate your mm -hmm. facility and sit with your banker and say, if I was going to pay this loan, say, in three years, can I pay it in three and a half years? Yeah. So that it doesn't quite affect you. And mm. also, when you make some money, you can push some of it into repayment of the facility to just manage that cost. Right. And also, it wa you watch out. You watch out on uh, uh, some of the things that you wanted to do in terms of expansion. If you yeah. want to go maybe into capital, you want to build, like now we want to build our own warehouse and stuff like that, is it worth building now or do we yeah. wait a little bit? Yeah. The other option would be also to bring in international investors. Yeah. So we are also raising money from international investors. Yeah. We are hoping that this is the year that. Because yeah. there's international investors who are looking to invest here. Yeah. And how, how are you reaching out to them, by the way? Because I believe you must have some sort of a resume. Because I yes. can't just start a Mitumba business right yes. now and yes. expect to you reach need out track to record. you. You need, yeah, track, you need record. track record. You need, to right? have, you need to show this is yeah. where we started and this is where we are. And, and this for is what the period? Plan. And for yeah. what period? They yeah. look at maybe three or four years of right. you doing business. Mm -hmm. They look at your growth level. They look at the impact you're having in the society in terms of the number of jobs you're creating. Right. Those are some of the things they look at. Right. Yes. But they're also very interested because you see the government is doing affordable housing. No, Naim Jengo is coming up. Yes. It's a huge opportunity. Oh, but then how do you feel about it <laughs> now that you've said it's a huge opportunity? Because huge it has received a lot of, uh, of opposition. They're it has received a lot of opposition. Because of the housing levy tax. Because of the housing levy tax. Mm -hmm. But you see... We, we, the shortage of houses in Kenya is really high. And we have to house our people. Okay. We really do have to house our people. So we are excited. There, there are some that are already up and I'm capping. There's one in Riru. Okay. There's one in Riru coming up. Um, it should be completing anytime soon. If you go to, if you go to site, the, 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 the construction has really come up. The president launched it, I think, last year, the beginning of last year right. at some point. So we are really looking forward to it. Our only challenge is that paint is the last thing. Yeah. Like the, the developer. Like the final product. It's the final product. Outside so we have to wait, yeah. but also prepare because yeah. affordable housing is here with us. So right. a lot of opportunity for local manufacturers, right. a lot of opportunity for our young people because so they, right. they're going to get jobs, mm -hmm. and also opportunity for people who are employed to get houses. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I know it's some, at, at this point it might not look like it's a good thing, but they'll thank him maybe after five years, or maybe yes. after he has left maybe <laughs> presidency. Perhaps, yes. Because uh, the amount of opposition that that project has mm, received mm. is really insurmountable. But infrastructure development uh. is always a good thing. Do you remember Thika Road? When Kibaki yes. was building Thika Road and he took down, there was a Nakumat. Right. There's the roster, there's a Nakumat that went down. And right. guys were up in arms. But today, look at Thika Road. Right. It opened up that highway completely. completely. Yeah. So when the infrastructure is going on, people might right. not appreciate it. Yeah. But believe you me, for a country like ours that is developing, infrastructure is key. Right. We must house our people, we must feed our people, we must clothe our people. Right. Once we've done the basics, then now we can move to other things like entertainment right. and things like that. But housing is key. It's very key. Yeah. Food is key. Especially in urban areas. Now. Especially even in rural areas. You, yeah. you know you, when it's raining, you can't be outside. True. You must be under shelter. Yes. Yeah. And it also forms stability for the home. Yeah. Mm. Nice, that's incredible. Now, also still on the ecosystem, that yes. is the climate of where you operate. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe what are some of the conducive uh, factors that have actually propelled you in terms of now? Because uh, I believe politics, the, polit the state of politics of a country mm. has a massive effect mm. on the nature of operations of mm. any business. Of any in business. terms of also seeing the products or profit, uh, mm. also networking in between mm. and mm. expansion. So maybe in Kenya right now, mm -hmm. from your experience and mm -hmm. where you sit, mm -hmm. what are some of the favorable conditions that maybe people are blind to, but you are able to but see. But we are able to see. One of them is we have an association called the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. I'm sure okay. you've heard about it. So that as an association in the National Chamber of Commerce, they help business people lobby. Okay. They, you, you're, an, you're an umbrella organization. I'm a member of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, which is an umbrella organization right. that helps manufacturers, local manufacturers lobby. Right. But also... Um, the, en the a business environment, as much as the economy is a bit difficult right now, the business environment is not as bad as we want to think. Really? If you wake up tomorrow and look for a customer to sell anything, it will be bought. Mm. It will be bought. Right. It's just that we really have to 
be a bit more positive. And that's why it's beautiful when it's a new year. That's why yeah. we have to enjoy Actually, the new year. We are yes. like week two. <laughs> we are week two. We have to look at the year yeah. with as much positivity that we can bring to the table. Right. Yes. Because yeah. there's a lot of investment coming into the country, foreign yeah. direct investment coming into the country. Uh -huh. And all these people are coming into the infrastructure industry. Right. So there's a lot of buildings coming up. And there are lots and lots of opportunities. If you open your eyes, opportunities are endless. Right. Yes. Right. So, um, in, I don't know, last year's election, <laughs> did, did you have a smooth run? Oh, during the elections? Yeah, 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 yeah pretty much. Um, you see... Actually, it's last year but one, you know. Last year but one. So, still. two main <laughs> things that have happened during COVID and also yeah. during elections. Okay. What happens is for many um, Kenyans, because of the uncertainty, right. they build more. Yeah. You see, if you are thinking of building your own home and you're right. not sure when... When there is uncertain times, then you quicken the process. Right. Yes. So you quicken the process. So as much as there are not as many opportunities, say in the luxury end right. of the product, mm -hmm. for a product like paint, right. there is there's an opportunity. There's an yeah. opportunity. So we haven't seen, we were really not affected as right. much. Not that yes. much. Yes. Hmm. And if you look at the major businesses, they were really not affected. Okay. No, they were not. Right. Yes. Which is an so as Kenyans, prospect. we have to yeah. become real entrepreneurs. We have to build. Because right. you see, when you're building something, even mm -hmm. though uh, something comes for, say, one or two, three months, okay. it might affect you and your business might slow down. Right. However, you're building. You've been building for the last... Uh, we've been building for the last 12 years and yeah. I'm hoping that this business will go and be taken over by my children and their children and their children's children. So right. we are building. Yeah. As long as you're building, you have fundamentals that mm -hmm. keep you going. As opposed to uh, if you're trading. Trading, you know, is buying and selling. So you buy and sell, right. you buy and sell. But if you're not building anything, then it becomes a huge challenge when there's right. a downfall, say an election or yeah. COVID or there's war. Right. So I encourage entrepreneurs to build businesses that can stand the test of time. Right. Yes. Maybe oh, interesting. Are there also maybe obstacles you've met? Because 10, 12 years in total is really a, a yes, huge amount of yes. time. Maybe what are some of the obstacles you've had to overcome in that industry before you tell us about your competitors? <laughs> and <laughs> at some point brands. we had mentioned <laughs> the Mutokinju, which is like, yes. uh, I saw recently they were highlighted in the business something. They yes. won an award they as well. They won an award. Yeah. Mutokinju is one of these, is, uh, is cementing itself as a distributor, as a main distributor for paint. Right. Yeah, so... Gen at large in Kenya? At large in Kenya. Okay. I don't know whether they've gone elsewhere. I don't know. But our competitors really are not Mutokinju. We compete with the manufacturers. We compete with Crown Paints and okay. Basco Paints and Plascon. Those are what we call CIDA competitors. Right. So yes. when you look in this room, are you able to tell uh, which company might have done this no, painting? No, <laughs> you can't tell. You can't okay. tell who made the paint. Right. But you see also the market is huge. Right. So called Kubwa. So called mm -hmm. Kubwa. There's always a niche market for you. And you see, for okay. us, what we've done is we are taking the headache off the customer. Right. How do we take headache off? When you think of painting your house, right. you're thinking of looking for a fundi. Mm -hmm. The fundi comes, gives you a quote. Then you have to go to the hardware, buy paint. Then come, it's painted. You don't like it. You don't like the color. Yeah. So what do we do as rock mix? Right. If you call on us, we will send a team that will come to you. Okay. They'll give you a quote. We're able to give you a quote. We're even able to sample the colors because you're not sure... Say, for example, you're looking at, say, maybe a brown. You're not sure of the brown that you want. Right. So we'll give you several options. Right. And like a shade. Like a shade card. And okay. it's actually on the wall, so you, you can see exactly how your wall will look like when you're right. done painting. Mm -hmm. And then we come in, we have our own interim, in right. in-house team of painters, mm -hmm. plus our paint. Okay. And then also we give you warranty. Did I tell you that? No. Uh, no, you hadn't <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> wow, that's incredible because even, even buying a phone at a shop, there's yes. phones that don't even offer yes. a warranty. There are phones that don't offer yeah. warranty. So for us, buy it, Nivo, peace, yeah, see you. <laughs> Find a way. But yes. you give a warranty, give warranty, which is especially incredible. Especially for external. You see right. external because we are in the equator under the tropical sun. Yeah. There's paint you paint and in two weeks you're not sure that color is what yeah. you wanted. Uh -huh. So we give warranty of up to 10 years. And that is even including people like if you had a client from TZ or uh, Uganda. We give warranties across. We are okay. very, very confident in our product. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's how we beat the big brands. Okay. 
really interesting. Uh, I'm told we have five minutes and then we go. Oh, <laughs> Time yeah. really flies so okay. fast. Maybe so also, what are some of the lessons? Mm -hmm. And then maybe for someone who's watching right now mm -hmm. and they want to get into this journey of, of building this incredible business idea. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have a vision. Mm -hmm. But of course, the basics of a bi starting a business, first of all, have a business plan. And you've literally shown us your Don't journey you and whatnot. Plan. You need a customer. You need a customer, but though you had mentioned that, you need a customer first. A customer. Please explain it to them. You this is your camera. Yeah. This is my camera. So yeah. when you're starting a business, one of the most important things is a customer who will pay you for your product or service. Okay. Once you have that customer, the second thing is to expand the customer base. So multiply the number of customers that you have and also retain the customer that you have. That means you have to give a product that is excellent quality or a service that is of good quality right. so that you retain your customer. Mm -hmm. Once you have your customer, the fundamentals of running a business are the same. You have to manage your cash flows. You have to manage your systems. And then growth and consistency. I can't right. emphasize that enough. You have to be consistent. You have to do the same thing over, over, and, over, and, again. over and over and over and over again. Yes. Like getting used to routine is really a difficult thing. It's difficult, but yeah. it's very important because what I say is you pay time. Once you pay time, mm -hmm. success is inevitable. Right. When we were in the midst of building this business, it was right. very, very difficult. Like there are days I used to wonder, hey, yeah. but now if you call me, I can come. I'll come and sit here. I'm having an interview with you. The factory is running. Salespeople are selling. Paint yeah. is being painted. Like there's a whole operation happening behind me, but right. it's taken doing the same thing over and over, over again. and over and over again. And right. after you pay what I call you pay time, then right. success is inevitable. Yeah, and maybe the legalities, uh, I, believe, I believe you've been through this a lot and now with the nature of our political system, are there maybe at some point where things were so uncertain, especially now for, because yours is a registered business, right? Yes, we are registered. So how did you get a part of the documentation, which is a very key part as well for any entrepreneur, especially yes. SAI? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. How yes, did you yes. go through that process? So uh, documentation, what you need in terms of documentation is registration. So what used to happen back then, registration of companies even right now is not as difficult. All you need is a lawyer and a legitimate lawyer right. who will register for you, your organization. Right. But also now for people like us, we are registered with KRA, so we pay our taxes. We are registered yeah. with KEBS. We have our, uh, what's that called, the diamond mark of quality. Yeah. But by the time you get the start, let's not talk about a lot of, when you're starting, really right. the documentation will catch up. Right. Start and then let the documentation catch up. Yeah. Catch up. Catch up on things like NSSF, NHIF, all these people. Right. So at, at some point, by the time you grow to a certain level, you will have to have your house in order. Right. But when you're starting, my mm -hmm. advice would be just start the business and then let the documentation catch on. By the end of your first year in business, you will have put your documentation together. Yeah. Because sometimes there is, I call it analysis paralysis. So yeah. your fear of starting, you're so afraid. Yeah. You're afraid of things that maybe don't even bother you. Pessimistic. Because maybe you've, yes. you've, you've heard of stories. Because people heard hear, of oh, stories. I started this business and then something happened. Yes. I can't start such a similar yes. one. Yeah. So for small businesses in this country, like okay. if you're operating below 5 million, there right. are things you're not required to pay. Right. Or there are documents that you're not required to have. Because you're still considered small. Right. At the point you hit 5 million annual turnover, yes. then now you need to have your documentation in order. Right. But don't have analysis paralysis. Start the business. And as you start, because it's not like every day you'll go look for the customer, yeah. one day look for a day off and put the documentation together. Right. Yes. I have like two questions, just very fast. Uh, hopefully right. they won't cut me off. Okay. Um, loans, servicing debt, which mm -hmm. is also very key part in mm. any business. Mm -hmm. There's those businesses that solely depend on borrowing from a Local financial banks. institution to another, yes. maybe a bank. Yes. And in an, in an article that was written about you, you advise entrepreneurs to never rely on borrowed on money from banks. When you're starting, Why is that? When you're starting, do not rely on loans because nobody will give you. Okay. When you're starting the business, don't rely on loans because nobody will give you. Mm -hmm. And those who give you, the interest rate will be very high because right. you're considered high risk. Right. So raise your money from customers. Okay. But there's a level where you reach, then not even the banks will lend to you. Completely right. unsecured. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because but you then also you have, have to something have physical to show. Yes, now you have something physical to show and you have right. track record. Right. If you bank with one bank, like right now, you pick up a, a local bank, say for example KCB, and you bank with them consistently, consistently for maybe 12 months, where all your money is going in, all your money is going out, then you can. For actually for Kenya Commercial Bank, let me talk about Kenya Commercial Bank for a minute. I don't, I'm not endorsing them. 
ah, you know, these days of endorsements. Yeah. But they have a female-led enterprise fund that is yeah. unsecured. I actually saw an advert on, you saw an on advert another like mainstream yeah, station yeah, yeah, yeah. about it's it. It's legit, yeah. yes. They give you unsecured facility, ah. especially for women in business. Right. If you've banked with them for a certain period of time, right. and they, they can see, because it's their statement, they can see how you've been banking with them and you need a certain amount of money, they're able to give yeah. it to you completely unsecured. Yeah. Yes. I wish this information was even reachable to the people in the interiors yes. to know about female-led, you know, yes. uh, w what not, because this is like an empowerment forum it's a that huge actually empowerment nurtures forum. women yes. into yes. business. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Lastly, before you tell us where people can find you and access you, maybe what is one lesson that you've learned in business for 12 good years that you can pass it on now that it's just a new year? And also, uh, uh, are you friends with uh, and I tried Madame Keroche from uh, no, Keroche no, no, Breweries. No, no, but I really admire her. Okay. I admire her. I admire her. I think she's a woman of steel. Okay. I really admire her. You know You've met her? No, I haven't met her. I have not had the privilege okay. of meeting her, but I'm hoping that one day I'll meet her. Okay. Yes, I have that. I think she's an amazing woman. Amen. There's a Madame for Keroche, and there's also someone else. There's also another lady, the Decra Roofing Lady, right, who has yeah. set up a factory in Juja. Right. I've also not met her. So one of the biggest. They're some of the biggest. Yes, yeah. women doing business, doing big things in this right. country. I think yes. you should feature on the strength of a woman here because <laughs> it, it's not easy to find like it's resilient women that yes. have such a huge track record yes. in business. Yes. Or have one lesson and then where people can access you, this is your camera. Consistency, do the same thing over and over and over again. You can find us on our social media pages. We are on Instagram at Rock Mix International. We are on Facebook at Rock Mix International. We are on YouTube. We are on TikTok, uh, and also physically we are in Riru. If you just Google Rock Mix International, you'll find our number. Give us a call, reach out to us, and we'll come to you. Yeah, I'm a same Google. <laughs> Had the piano number and email, <laughs> it shows just something. Google Rock Mix. You'll <laughs> Rock find Mix. Us. We'll yes. find us. Yes. Before we actually go, let me just sample one comment. And I say my comment, Shangu say this was in regarding to a question we asked uh, on, on on our social media. A, uh, it was regarding actually business, yeah, a thousand. I'm a sema kwa maisha angu sa hii ni ngumu kidogo lakini kwa mwani angu ni kuuza my eye, which is a good idea. Which is a really good idea. At but least you're selling something. Anything. Still something. Yeah. Start with anything. Right. But ukianza kuuza my eye, yeah. have a vision to grow. Right. Uza my eye, keep kuku, grow a farm. Yes. Even export the eggs. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Anything that you start, you can start small, but right. you're not allowed to remain small. All right. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Rosemary Kirimi. Uh, by the way, she has employed 30 people and permanent. Yes, we have 30 members of staff. Yeah, meaning they're, you know, the universe. You should Thank visit you so us Thank you so much. You, I visit will. Us. I yes. promise I will. Yes. Rosemary Kirimi, she's the CEO and uh, uh, also a founder, co founder of Rockmix International. Uh, an thank incredible you. company and thank you so much for sharing with us your skills thank you. and i trust 2024 is going to be an amazing year for yes. business owners yes we are looking forward to a really really amazing year right yes thank you so much thank you. so so we call it a day right here on entrepreneurship tuesday and be rest assured we'll see you next time right here on 424 channel personally at brian sakwan one ulisa mahandol yako ni at rock mix international all right at rock mix international thank you so much thank you